Okay, let's see how we can create instance of variables. In order to create an instance variable, you have to have a class. So, let's go to System Browser and create a class like the other time, like we have done previously. We re right click anywhere in the package column. We cre create add package and we call, call, call this package animal. And inside here, we're going to put and create a new class named dog. Accept. And also we're going to add an instance variable to this class before accepting. And this instance variable is going to call per column. Now, to repeat here is that when we name a class, we always keep the has tag sign here in front of the name of the class. And when we name an instance variable, we uh, put it inside single quotations. We can add other, other instance variables separating by space, but they always need to be inside the single quotation. So we can have another like age. Oops, sorry. I'll put mm -hmm. age. So we can have the hair color of the dog and its age. Let's click accept and we have our class. Now, now we have an instance variable and we have, actually we have two instance variables, one named hair color and one named age. But we want to set some initial values inside these instance variables. So what we're going to create here is a new method that's called initialize method. In order to create a method, it's very simple. You press on the protocol and as soon as you press on the top selection of the protocol, the very top selection is going to give you a template of a message. Now we're going to erase this template. The first line is the name of our method. Our method is going to go initialize. We can use it to complete and sure enough it's initialized. It's going to add a message here that says super initialize. We're going to explain this later on when we talk about uh, inheritance. For now just add an odd and dot to it so to sign the end of the command and let's add an initial valor for our instance variable. So in this case, let's say that for hair color, we're going to assign the value red. Remember, this is a string because it is surrounded by single quotation marks. Okay, here and here. And for age, we're going to assign the age two. Again, we add periods in the end to mark the end of each statement and accept. Now what will happen is that initialize method is called every time we create a new instance of this class. So every time you create a new instance, this method is triggered, is triggered automatically. But we want also to have access to these variables. We have to want to we want to be able to change them and we want to be able to see their values inside. In order to do that, we will have to create what we call a getter and a setter. A getter method is a method that gets the value of an instant variable, while a setter is a method that sets the value of the instant variable. How we do that? Well, actually, it's quite simple. We go to the top selection as before. It gives us once more the template of a method, of a definition of a method. We erase that and we create a method with the name of our instance variable. So hair color. Now, each time we call this method, we want this method to give us back to return with the value of the instance variable itself. So in order to instruct the method to return a value, to give us a value, we add this upper arrow sign and uh, which is my keyboard is actually upper, uh, it's uh, above the, it's shift and six. Uh, I, it depends on your keyboard, it might be in, this, in a different place, but you should be able to find it. And the name of, of the instant variable. So what we say here is each time you call the hair color method, I'm going to return you to give you back the value of the hair color, hair color instance variable. Accept that. Now, when we want to change the value of the hair color, we need to create a new method that's going to, it's, it's called a setter, and it's going to assign 
a new value to our hair color instance variable. How we do that? Well, it's actually very simple. What we're going to do is going to L again here, which is the first one. It's going to give us the template. We click in the template. Now, you remember that this is always the area that displays the code inside methods. So we select this, we erase, and we say hair color, but this time we use the column sign. Now, as soon as the Remember to put a colon sign inside uh, next to the end of the name of the method immediately. Now, we're going to put a value to this, uh, a value that's going to receive the new value for the instance variable. So in this case, let's call it a color. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is say her color, which is the instance variable. is assigned whatever is the, is the value of color. Now, remember that this is a variable in, in essence. So each time it receives a value here, it's going to replace color with a value and assigns this value to our instance variable here. So let's click, click Accept. Now, let's see what happens. Workspace. Now, we want to create an instance of the class dog. Now, we're going to create a new dog, a new dog instance. We're going to call this dog my dog Lucy. Okay. Now, I'm going to assign the instance of the dog class. Now, dog new creates the, new, the instance. Now, as soon as we do that, let's do that. Now, we have an instance unsigned to uh, our Lucy variable, which represents a dog named Lucy. Now, uh, let's see the hair of the color. Lucy, hair color. Oops, no, that's wrong. Now, one thing that I forgot to say is that we always start the name of the class with a capital letter, and we always start the name of the method with a lower letter. And this is a convention that is used for Faro in order to differentiate between classes and methods the name of the classes, and the name of the methods. The same happens with instance variables. We always use lowercase for instance variables. So what it's going to do here is not going to access the instance variable directly. The reason why we created these methods is because uh, uh, Faro doesn't allow us to access instance variables directly. It is, those variables are actually private. This is a good thing because it allows us some variables to hide them from anyone outside, from someone so we have some instance variable, for example, that we want to keep uh, used only internally inside the object. We have created these methods because we want to be able to have access to this, to this variable. So if we go here, sorry about that, here, and right-click print it, sure enough, it gives us whole color red. This is a string with a value red. Now, if we want to change this value, all we have to do is say, Lucy, hair color, period, blue. Now, because we have used the here column, it's a different method. It uses this method. And this method, compared to this method, where this method returns the value of the hair color, this method assigns a new color to the hair color instance. So what, exactly what we did here. As you can see, everything we type has a meaning and a purpose. Let's do it. Now, hair color is no longer assigned the red value we have already assigned in the initialize value. Because when we did dog new, we triggered this method. And it gave values to hair color, red, and age, two. Now, if we print the value of hair color, Sure enough, it's going to give us blue because we have called this method that assigns. This is the setter, and we have changed the value of the instance variable and assigned it the blue value. And this is exactly how instance variables work. This is a re big reason why instance objects are important in object or any programming. It gives us the ability to keep creating new kind of instance. For example, let's create a new dog. Let's call the new dog. Uh, Bobby. 
dognu. And let's see what kind of value Bobby has. Do it. Or we can select all of this and do it. And let's print this. Now, if you see here, it, because it uses the initialize method, each time we call new, it assigns the, a default value. So it has only the default value. Let's change the value from, let's give him blue hair. That would be a lot of fun for a, call, for a dog, a dog with a blue hair. Oh no, sorry, not blue, let's say green. Because we have already assigned blue in other color. Okay. Okay, now we have signed to string green to the whole color in such variable. Do it. Now, see what happens here. So what we have here is that each instance of the dog class has its own set of values. This is what is, this is a very important concept for object-oriented programming. Each instance has its own set of values. And the way we access variables, instance variables, in Smalltalk and in Faro is by creating correspondent getter and sender methods. A getter is a method that gives us back the value of the instance variable, while a setter is one method that sets, assigns a new value to the instance variable. And pretty much that's it. See you in the next tutorial.